So hello and welcome to Nature Connections. Uh, thanks everyone who's watching this video, of course. Um, in the Nature Connections uh, interview series, I talk to people from all paths of life, but who have one thing in common, which is their connection to nature in what they do. So in today's episode, I'm excited to speak to Tim Craven. <laughs> um, welcome, Tim. Thanks so much for, right. for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Um, so Tim is an established artist and the founder of The Arborealist, which he will tell us more about himself. But first, let's discover more about you, Tim, if you don't mind telling us a bit more about what is your story, um, what you do, yeah. and, and how that came about. <laughs> okay, well, I'll be as brief as I can. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you from near Romsey in Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been down here since uh, 19, 1980. Uh, and I've put around roots, got family and a couple of children and some grandchildren. Um, and um, I was born in Birmingham. I trained in fine art, established College of Art, now defunct, sadly. Um, and I woke up one day and realised I'd got to find a job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> to earn, to earn a living. And I knew I didn't want to teach. And um, I knew that I didn't. Have. I, I was getting some success with exhibitions even then, but no one uh, gave me any um, encouragement to become mm -hmm. a full-time artist. It never entered my head that I could make it an artist, which is why I'm always amazed about how artists can survive just mm. making their art. You know? I mean, I, not everybody's a Damien Hirst, starving artist and all that. Anyway, I uh, wanted some career advice, and one day, uh, well, I went to do some um, volunteering at Birmingham mm -hmm. City Museum and Art Gallery, fantastic collection, wonderful art gallery, and my first day in the conservation department, I knew this is it, this is what I want to do. So I trained in the conservation of easel paintings at Gateshead, Newcastle, loved it up there. I worked very hard. There's a time in everybody's life, I think, mm -hmm. um, and it hit me then when you suddenly know what you want to do and you're mm -hmm. thirsty for knowledge. You just suck it up like a sponge and you're, you're on it. Uh, I, I, I mean, there weren't many students there, but I, I, you know, I worked so hard, I was top student. And I'd have got a job, uh, came out in 79, I'd have got a job in anywhere in the country in a museum and art gallery. And luckily for me, I, got, I, I was uh, appointed assistant conservation officer at Southampton City Art Gallery in 1980. Mm -hmm. It's one of, the best one of the best galleries in the country. Um, it's still a growing collection. It's famed for its British 20th century and contemporary progressive art. Always had a national advisor. Our first was Kenneth Clark, and now we work with a senior tape curator. So we was by up and up and up, up and coming mm -hmm. rising uh, contemporary artists before they get the Turner Prize, you know, and they, they, their prices shoot. So, yep. can't them. so wonderful place to, to work lovely colleagues, fantastic, beautiful art gallery. And I stayed there. The same time. I, I've got the sticker gene, which my father had. Uh, I stayed there 37 years, but I had six job titles. I became conservation officer, collections manager. The top job director came up three times. I said, no, the fourth time I said, okay. So my <laughs> golden years was 2002, 2008 as curator or director of the gallery, lovely okay. time. I was meeting world-class artists. I mean, and I was thinking, I want to be like you. Because every day I was, I painted every, I never stopped painting. I painted every day when I got okay. home, just okay. as a, a wind down to be creative a bit. And I, I, you know, I had some shows and sold a few things, but to low level. Mm -hmm. um, but having that collection at, at mm -hmm. my fingertips, and, and I knew it forensically because I was working on them. I was looking down microscopes at them from the 14th century to the present day. All mm -hmm. of these works were, were there at my fingertips. As an artist, mm -hmm. it's an incredible yardstick. But also it's incredibly distracting because you're thinking, oh, I like that. And oh, I like that too. You know, what, where mm -hmm. do you go? So you have to be quite disciplined because most artists will tell you um, that it may be one show they saw that turned them around, you know, a light mm -hmm. bulb went on. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was um, the Icon Gallery when I was a formative art student in 1975, 76 uh, in Birmingham, uh, a solo show by John Salt. And again, Birmingham bought, but he's one of the Birmingham born, but he was in, in America, in Baltimore, New York in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. He became one of the first 16 members of the first generation of the photorealist movement. And the photorealist big, movement, okay. Photorealist, mm -hmm. Big colourful canvases, there's one in Birmingham, uh, one in Wolverhampton, uh, one in Edinburgh, and one in Southampton now, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest are all in the States, he sent them all to the States. Um, and there were big colourful canvases, uh, the paint was wafer thin and you couldn't see any brushwork. Mm -hmm. How have you done this thing? The hand is entirely hidden. They knocked mm. me out. And it's all done by airbrush and stencil. There's no paintbrush been hit the canvas. Mm. It's all been breathed through with an airbrush through the stencil. All the work is in stencil. They're like lace. They're amazing. Anyway, mm. he's a friend of mine now. He's my mentor. He's not very well at the moment. Um, uh, John Salt, well. right? That's his name. John Salt. Yeah, John okay. Salt. Just look him up. Fantastic. I'll have a look. I, I don't know him. Yeah. Mm. And he was, he was in my first tree show because 
uh, during the 90s, he painted a, a number of works which had trees, a lot of trees in the foreground. And he blamed me mm. for that because he had a poster of mine in his studio and it sort of seeped into his consciousness. I but see. His, his main subject was bashed up American cars. Mm. And then he got more romantic and got moved away and stuff. So, you know, interesting subject. Anyway, that's what turned me and still haven't recovered from it. Um, so that's where you got the first contact with the photorealism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, but Chuck Close, I mean, you know, all these people, they, mm. I mean, this is when it was, you know, it's very common now, but it went out of fashion, but came back in. So mm -hmm. It's got conceptual elements, but um, that's when it first hit the, hit the scene. Of course, the, the artists haven't hated it because they thought it was aggressive. It was narrative. It was, you know, not mm. part of the modern movement, but it got, had huge success in the, in the marketplace. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it went international to Japan, Germany, all over the place and the UK. Um, so that that's that side of it. So uh, uh, in 2008 at Southampton, and we had a new head of service who pushed who, who, who merged the museums and galleries together in Southampton. Okay. So my job was, my job as top of the art gallery was axed. Mm. My team, my great team was axed. My forward program was axed. Mm. So I was a bit miffed, but I stayed. I became lead curator. I, I was still doing management stuff. Um, and, uh, but I told myself, okay, now I'm going to prioritize my art practice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to get, you know, commercial, I'm going to put that at the front of my Mm -hmm. my uh, agenda yeah uh, and then in fact a few years later with the budget cuts in local authority because of the austerity program you know there's no money in local authority the museums not going to this discretionary service they don't have to do it they know it's important mm. but they can't afford it so there was another cut and they cut my job and i went so i was starting to go down the ladder now <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's the dizzy height um I, go down to said, go back up higher so they said um, you can be curator of art and um and half a week so they they chopped the job in half Mm. So luckily, I've been there so long I could get my pension. That was the best, it's still the best thing left in local authority. <laughs> um, so I wasn't going to starve. So I did that for nearly three years, but it killed me because I was running down corridors. I just, the demand didn't go away and you just couldn't do it really. And mm. that's, I'd already started the Arborealists. I joined the London group and this was my future. And I promised myself when I went there, I won't stay there forever. I'll go and do something else. But this was getting close to natural retirement age 65. Mm. Uh, and I thought, I'm going to go. And when Southampton, uh, was was looking to join to become a trust, which mm -hmm. a lot of um, public sector uh, local authority museum galleries have become trust because it's cheaper and mm -hmm. and you get you know you, you get various financial advantages. So Bir you know all the big ones like Birmingham's a trust, the town in is a trust. Um, so um, but but they pulled out. But I said, well, if Southampton's going to become a trust and join Hampshire County Museum Service and Winchester Museum Service, I will go then. It's no point in me joining a new organisation. Mm. Um, so I, I told my boss I'm going, um, and uh, it was a bit of gasp, but um, I was counting down the months, really. And mm. then the council just pulled out. They decided they wouldn't do it. But anyway, I was going anyway. Um, <laughs> and I came, I came back the next month um, with this exhibition I'd, I'd had the idea for and curated, because uh, mm. I love history, um, on, on, the, on, the, on the subject of castles. Mm. So we had turned, we had historic works from, from major loans from, from big museums and galleries in, in London and so on, Tate, British Museum. We had Turner's, we had all sorts of fantastic, Piper, um, right up to, and the contemporary artists. There were 60, 13 arborists in that show because trees and castles were going away. Mm. Uh, and it was opened by Christopher Lebrun, President of the Royal Academy, who does castles. Mm -hmm. It was a great thing. And now I'm on the sequel show, which is World War II uh, defense, hardened defences pillboxes and so on, which have been described as 20th century castles. So I've got a full venue talk of that, which I'm working on now. Right. But it all yeah. goes with trees, because the tree is such a versatile subject. Now, going back to my art practice, um, I, I was a traditional landscape painter, if you like. Um, okay, you know, so from what, the I, very I, beginning, that's what you were painting. Yeah, yeah, I love the countryside. I'm always out under the trees, mm. whatever, my dogs and stuff. So um, I was a landscape painter. And um, I had this, this image that I, I worked on, which was trees. Mm. And so the light, a light went on. Ooh, that's more interesting because what I was finding that I'm, I'm not a cloud painter, you know, the vapid yep. skies. It's not, it doesn't interest me, it's boring for me. And if you look at um, the traditional topographic landscape, it's a series of horizontals, you know, the horizon, the middle distance, the foreground, it's all bands going that way. And I found very simply, that's all it is. If you go vertical, trees, it's more interesting. It's as <laughs> dynamic as it's, it's dynamic. You know, you get more interest, and the and the skies mm -hmm. cut up in little abstract fragments. You know, a lot of artists play with the, this this uh, border between abstraction and figuration. They they mm -hmm. teeter on they teeter on, on that fence between the two, jumping between like someone like Ben Nicholson, for instance, and um, and Roger Hilton. You know, the, the St. Dives artist. So um, I started to paint trees, and that was my main subject, and I became more and more interested. I'm also interested, mm -hmm. and I think um, humans are innately drawn to pattern. 
okay mm -hmm. and i was interested always interested That's interesting okay i was drawn to it in organic pattern i call it sort of fuzz you know mm -hmm. the leafy foliage whatever it's this is pattern making and then i met bridget riley i bought a work for her at the gallery a uh, wonderful artist she's one of britain's greatest living artists if not the bridget and, uh, I became, yeah I, became, I fell in love with her stuff and and to, to have a work of art her early op art you know she was an innovative artist in the early 60s um, that you look at it makes you feel dizzy or sick it's an extraordinary thing mm. for a flat 2D design to do to, mm. to your body, to your eyes, to your, you know. And the, the, the fame, I love artist quotes. The famous quote for her is, no artist, dead or alive, has made us more aware of our eyes than Bridget Riley. So I was, you know, because I, and I did a show and an exhibition at Southampton 2008 on the systems group, which is art, uh, which is the antithesis of romantic art. It's, mm -hmm. it's logical, objective, um art with, without any sentiment you know mm. and it, it, these artists they were linked to the russian construction it's the early early 70s when they flourished jeffrey Steele and Mal malcolm hughes um Sirota did a show with them at the white chapel the early 80s but 1980 78 i think was the last major show of the system group i don't know if you probably haven't heard of them no i haven't so heard of a, them no it's about, it's about geometry and math and mathematics mm. so it's 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 akin to op art which is intuitive but okay. it's it, it based on mathematical law, mm. but it has an aesthetic. It's a rational aesthetic, devoid of sentiment. I love that stuff too. I love the precision, mm. and which I love in, 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 in Bridget Riley. So I was mixing all these things into my, into my art. A bit of John Salt, a bit of Bridget Riley, but, and a bit of Charles Jinner of the Camden Town Group, one of my heroes, who, mm -hmm. was, who was teased for his pattern making, but he, his hero was Van Gogh. Mm. And of course, it's thought that his work when he was in Leeds Art Gallery was seen by Lowry, and was influenced, you know, influenced Lowry, which I'm sure mm. he did. So you have this sort of family tree of Van Gogh, Charles Jinner, Lowry. It's interesting. So all this mixes my stuff, and and um, and I I um I lent some work to uh, an artist I knew who taught freelance at the gallery. Abby Creamer lives in Bournemouth, and I uh, went to go and she said, "Come see the show." And I very rarely went to go and see shows because um, uh, I don't have time, you know. Mm. <laughs> I spent my life doing that, but because Sam was loaning works all over the world, I've travelled all over the world as a courier. I'm not a great traveler, I'm quite sort of par parochial, but I got out as a courier. Mm. Uh, my last one was to Madrid, because I haven't been to Madrid, I thought it was a free trip to Madrid. I, and I did the Prado in the day. You know. Of course, um, you love a good trip. <laughs> yeah. I did Rome as the one for I went to, I famously went to Australia for a long weekend. I won't do it again, um, not in travel. Um, but it was great, uh, I came to get the Turner, get, bring the Turner back. Um, and. Um, so I went to see a show and I could see that it was like trees and she loved Bridget Riley too. And I thought, oh, you do my subject. And I said, we mm. should have a joint show together. And she said, yes. She hadn't seen my work, you know, about it. She said, yes. Mm. <laughs> what faith she had. Anyway, we had a couple of, uh, we had um, um, uh, a commercial show. Eventually we got one in Bath. It's 30 galleries in Bath. It's a really sort of gallery place. And um, a friend of mine, Steve Marshall, who was director of St. Bob, St. Bob Museum Art Gallery in Limington, New Forest, um, came to see the exhibition. He was going to have, and came to Private View with his family, and he was going to have my British English Surrealist collection at Southampton on loan as a <laughs> tour thing. I do a talk on that. And we were talking about that a few days after. He said, Oh, I like your show, and uh, all about trees and stuff. And I, and I said, I don't know if I pre thought it or what it just came out. I said, Because I'm always talk, thinking about exhibitions, everything's an exhibition for me, you see. Mm. I said, Steve, have you, have you ever done a show on trees? And he said, You know, because you're in the New Forest. He said, No. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, that's, that's you made my week out. That's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, that was the uh, idea. Like that that was the first, that was the first thing. And I said, well, look, hey, your gallery, it's beautiful gallery has got there, but it's not huge. This is quite an interesting subject. Let's, let's do, uh, let's do a two-parter. Part mm -hmm. one, historic. Part two, contemporary. I want to curate the contemporary one and I want to be in it. He said, mm. okay, you're on. One catalogue, same marketing, back to back. You know, and I came out with the name Under the Greenwood. I was reading a, um, mm. a, I was reading a, a neo neo romantic, old and neo romantic exhibition catalogue, and I saw the the phrase in French, mm -hmm. sous bois. Le sous bois. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. What's the, what's the English translation under the tree under the under the greenwood? Thomas Hardy. You know, so that's it. So that was the show title Under the Greenwood, picturing the British tree. Part one, historic. Part two, contemporary. Great. And when was that? The, 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 sorry. When was that? That was, was that? 2013, 2013, autumn 2013, um, at St. Barbara's Museum, I'm going in, in Newington. 
really fantastic show. It was wonderful. We had good critical press on that. The historic show was great. We've got my friend, Dr. Ann Anderson, to come and uh, curate the, the first one, because at that time I wasn't even out of time. You know, I was still doing this job as an actor as well. Um, and she was in all about um, time of day, seasons, you know, the, the protecting green canopy, the frightening wood, all these different aspects of wood. That's what she was about. And it was a really stunning exhibition. I thought, oh, God, I hope the contemporary one's going to be as good. But it was. And interestingly, Steve had, 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 um, had timed the first exhibition as longer because his audience was more conservative than small C. They liked historic stuff. And he thought they would be frightened by the contemporary stuff, would have a shorter run. But our show was really great. I, I knew from the outset I wanted as many artists as possible, mm. but just mm -hmm. for one work, just to show um, a huge variety of philosophy, idea, scale, medium, style, technique, whatever, what have you, united by this one single subject would do the trick. And it did. It was knockout. I had two uh, RAs in there, Andy Wishaw, uh, and the one and and um, George Shaw turned up turned up by shortly. Steve was in there. Board of Work for Southampton that was in there. John Salt was in it. Um, uh, and a lot of the artists I worked at Southampton had done trees. People like Dan Hayes is in the Tate Tate collection. Uh, and uh, other artists would send me uh, and me other names. So I had a fantastic roll call of artists. So, a really yeah, good. Show. 2013 really like that exhibition sort of marked the, um, yeah. the beginning of something like something unlocked like you 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 realize like trees as a subject like is gathering all these contemporary artists and it's really working well, the, for knockouts. There's nothing there's nothing new under the sun. When I was trawling around looking for for venues, I rang up a friend Brian Stewart, sadly died since I tried very young. A Falmouth Art Gallery. I said, tree show? No, he said, I've done a tree show. I called it Tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. So, yeah, great. Okay. Um, so, you know, but it, it, it was it was a bit of a landmark show, um, yeah. at least as far as what I could say. But I knew for, that this, for me, this was just the beginning. Exactly. You know? uh, this was, and I asked everybody at the opening, the contemporary opening, do you want to keep showing together? They all said yes. Suddenly, I had a, this group of 25 plus artists, and I didn't think we'd even have a name, you know, we just want to show mm. together because I wanted become an artist and uh, as you know as an artist you're on your own as an artist you're isolated mm -hmm. and I'd love teamwork in Southampton Art Gallery putting on a show you want the whole group of team different different um, professions different mm -hmm. expertise but you all you know you head you score the goal and the, the opening exhibition and I love doing that mm -hmm. so that's why I started the art really so I've got this group as a support network around me mm -hmm. so it's a selfish thing that's why I did it I thought I'd have six or seven mates to show I with you know. understand and that. Yeah, and it's a great it was, way to build a was, network and and it was it was to do also with the Camden Town Group, which was this united group of progressive artists trying to make their way as professional artists mm -hmm. in London. Uh, and they, you know, a Walter Sickert, their mover and shaker, said, you know, it's better to show mm -hmm. uh, seven or nine artists than one, and these things are best done in gangs. That was my that was my retro. That was my his, history got legacy. Yeah. So suddenly I had this group, and I thought we've got to find the venue now for to launch. And then Philippa Beale. Who actually you should speak to, mm -hmm. ex president of the London Group, very well connected, was a senior um, big cheese at the Central St. School, uh, Central St. Martin School yes. of Art, mm -hmm. uh, made her name in the 80s uh, as a, um, a feminist conceptual artist. She was mm -hmm. Southampton's mm -hmm. only artist in reverence in, in 19, early 1980s. So I'd met her earlier on. She, she, she moved, she bought a house in France and discovered trees and was drawing and painting trees. She came to my show in, mm -hmm. in Bath. Mm -hmm. And I, I wondered why, but I should realise later. Um, anyway, she's, if you like, sort of, you know, my number two, if you like, and, well, you know, she's she yeah. runs it with me, if you like. And um, she's brilliant. And she got the shows in in Gibraltar, which you've just been to in April, in Poitiers, in, Poitier, in La, uh, uh, Luda. She we had two shows in Bermondsey. The project's been mm. Bermondsey. That's down to her. So there's other people doing shows. And she came up with the name Arbrilis. She said, I want to, sh let's call ourselves the Arbrilis because it translates into French and I want to show in France. So that was that. Was that. That's always um, a, a something I have yeah, in mind. I would, I was, like how to translate between yeah, French and English. <laughs> yeah. Because I was, because I'm in the museum sex, I'm well connected with there with venues, mm. and we were so that was lending was 2014, yeah, lending a couple of Nashes to to the Royal West of England Academy in Bristol, great venue on a World War One Nash Paul Paul and John Nash show, and I said to the director Alison Bevan, who I'd known for quite a long time, um, are you interested in a, in a tree show? And it's all about timing with these things because mm. just so happened that Bristol the following year was European Green City. Ticks and boxes. They said yes. I saw. I took lots of cattle and I sold. I did my sales pitch, which I'm quite used to. Mm. And she said, "Yeah, let's have it." 
and it was a knockout. It was a fantastic show. And mm -hmm. I said, well, let's have some, we're inclusive, let's have some RWA, Royal West Academicians who do trees, let's have them in the show as well. And there were four or five of them. Mm. It got in the national press, the, um, the Telegraph called it stunning, which I mean, it was a beautiful show. Mm. And uh, the Times critics said, it's a, a show I'd pay to go and see, you know, so suddenly mm -hmm. we had national coverage and then artists just like came at me like an avalanche. I want to join, I want to join, you know. And I, um, so I thought, oh gosh. <laughs> um, Cause I did, you know, I'd invited all these artists. So it was just, I'm the gate, mm -hmm. I was the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And I was getting all these applicants and I was sifting through them and said, yeah, we'll have that one. And that's not that one, you know. Mm -hmm. I knew the yes and, and the definitely yes, definitely no's, but the ones in between, I wasn't sure about. And so I had to come up with some criteria for joining, which are, and they still are to this day, uh, professional training, a track record of exhibitions. And that's where you can sort the sheep from the goats where they've shown. Mm -hmm. uh, trees remain mm -hmm. subject. And because, I like divert, you know, the main principle dynamic driving force is this diversity of mm. approach of art practice. The new, new artists have to bring something a bit new. Okay. And suddenly okay. I was up to 40, 50, you know, and then I thought, well, I'm getting so many of it. Every time we show, we have publicity and then more artists come at me, you know, mm. and when we start our website, that was more, even more. And I get them, you know, quite regularly. And I have to, mm. I, I have a list now of over 50 artists, 55 artists who want to join, you know, who are up the stand, if you like. Fantastic. Uh, so I, 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 I thought, well, hang on, I, I need some help with this. Uh, I, I'll have a summit meeting in London. Um, was that 2060? I can't remember when it was now. So we, we, we met at the South Bank, which is free. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to pay for a, for a meeting room. You can, so if you, if you go early and bag some chairs, there's lots of space there. There's, uh, there's loos and there's uh, refreshments on. Yep. So it's great. So about 20 of us met there and uh, we talked about the programme, about various things. Uh, and I said, look, I'd like to go to... I'd like some help. Do you think we should have a, a membership committee, you know, to, to vote people in? They said, no, it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're still the gatekeeper. So I said, okay, I'd like to go to 50, cap at 50. And they said, okay. Mm -hmm. So that was, we, we had minute, written minutes. Philip was the secretary, he had to be, uh, have the official society to go to France. So we, we've, done, we've done all that. Mm -hmm. And we, we and eventually we had a treasurer. But but there's still to this day, there are no rules and there are no, it's no subscriptions. It's a very loose association. Okay, we can move, so is, we can move it, fast. What's the form of it? Is it an association? Um, like, what, what do you call yourself? A group? Uh, or Yeah, we're just a just uh, an artist cooperative, really. An artist cooperative? It's, okay. Of yeah. artists who all, like, work... Um, For artists. And it, the main thing, it's not a commercial outfit. So we show a lot of uh, museums, but, you know, people have... It's been good for people's careers. It's bad. And we have two aims. One is to promote our art and the other is to promote our subject. It's very simple. Mm. Uh, because I'm a museum person and the art market is... As um, it, I'm always rather curious about, and it skews art undoubtedly mm. if you're in the art market. Because mm. if you're signed up to an agent, they will say, "Do more pictures like that." They sell, but I want I don't want those. So yeah. you're, you're actually shackled mm. with, with 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 this artist movement that we've got now. We can do what mm. you want, and you can dip in and out of the shows we have. Yeah, uh, whatever. So that you, and as you're not paying anything, you know, you don't want any, mm -hmm. you don't want anything back from it. So it but works quite well at the moment. And then the next, the following year or two, I said, "Can I go up to 60? And they said, "Okay." <laughs> and then we 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 changed our website, and people actually had to pay a fiver, which is not very much, and submit more images. And some artists said, uh, "Okay, it's time for me to bow now." So we lost mm -hmm. a few. We down into the forties, um, but we've just been talking about. Um, we now have a treasurer, uh, so we have money. We we we've had we've got seven publications. Mm -hmm. uh, our 24th exhibition opens today at Burr yeah. House in Hampstead. Really mm -hmm. good show. That's one for two weeks. So I'm going to go and see it next week. Um, that's the Robert Eagle. So we had we have several sorts of shows. There's one yep. um, which which is initiated by me or by Philip or or some other art, artist in the mm -hmm. group. Anybody can curate a show, mm -hmm. and depending on the spec on the shape on the space, it can be either one work per artist. But we're going to have, we're going to have 36 artists in. So first come first serve. I've done that. Um, all all we got. You can have half a meter or a couple of meters each. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have two small ones, three you know, three small ones, two meters, one large one. We've done that, or um, we've done uh, commercial shows where. The, and this is Philippa's ex experience with the London Group. She said the best thing to do is to tell, is to say to the commercial guy, you choose the artist you think you can sell, mm. which is what yeah. Burr House is today, um, and uh, so it's invited. But it's so it's it's a semi arbitrary show if you like. But sure. the museum shows are it's open to everybody, mm -hmm. um, and that's how we began. So we 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 programmed um, up into you know several projects in the pipeline. It's that incredible. Like COVID. What a what a what a success! And you know, we're riding the eco But a, a key uh, a thing came about some years ago when George Peterkin OBE, who was a retired forester and published author, 
uh, on woodland, natural woodland. Mm -hmm. He um, mm -hmm. he came to see our show at St. Barbara's. Oh, we went back to St. Barb in, in 2016 where okay. I bought our, because yeah. I knew a publication, a book is really important for, for um, showing people, you know, for more mm -hmm. shows. Because I found that one exhibition opens doors for another. And it's a, it's a private views so that you have the idea for the next show. Mm. So I, you know, I built that. Um, and so we had this catalogue, fantastic catalogue uh, done by Sansom, a really good art printers in Bristol, published by them. We had some essays in there. One of, one of the artists that was a, um, um, Angela Summerfield, was an ex-senior uh, Royal Academy curator. She'd had published author. She'd had this essay called Why Do Artists Paint Trees? Oh, I'll have that, thank you. That went in the book. Um, I wrote some stuff. Um, and so there's lots of good essays around there. Mm. And uh, George Peterkin saw this show. Uh, he emailed me and said, uh, I'm inviting you to come and do a project that's Lady Park Wood. I said, oh, that's interesting. What's that? He said, it's the only, I think it's the only scientifically monitored unmanaged woodland in the country. Been around since the 1920s when it was formed, because that's when the okay. Forest Commission started to put all these, you know, plant these huge coniferous forests. Mm -hmm. And people were up in arms. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'll have some, some, old, some old forests we'll just keep as natural. And this was the only one they ended up with. It's the most easterly part of Wales, on Banks River Wye, very steep, uh, by Monmouth and Simmons Yacht. Not very big. Anyway, so George, so we met George, Richard Babin, who was the local guy at Hereford, and Fiona McIntyre, we already spoken to. Mm -hmm. The three of us went to meet George. He showed us round. We said, wow, this is fab. Lots of fallen trees because parts of that woodland have not been touched for 150 years. Mm. And they, they measure the trees every 10 years or so. And they know the tree, George knows the trees intimately. And he'll say, mm. point to, see that, see that branch crack there? That happened on a, on a storm such and such a day. This mm. is a very unstable place, you know, because it can change in an instant with, with, with the storm and stuff. And they, and they measure what happened, what, what succeeds, because the great thing about trees is they're amazing synergy with humanity. You know, they compete, but they also, uh, you know, they compete for the light, but they also yeah. work together. Yeah. You know, the forest environment is is is, is designed to, for the, for their longevity. So it's a fascinating yeah. read. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, the, one of the best books to read on this is, is Peter Wallaban's The Secret Life of Trees, because that, you know, never, look at, trees. never look at a tree yeah. differently after that. Amazing, fantastic. Anyway, so we anyway. said, yeah, we said, yeah, we'd love to do a project. Um, so I, I, I emailed all the artists, uh, 19 artists, including uh, George's wife, who's a good good amateur artist, joined us as well, she knows the wood so well, because we're always invited other artists to, to show with us if we can. Mm. And um, we had a two-year project. Uh, we went down and did some work, and I wanted to get a show locally. And I knew the one I wanted. I wanted, I wanted the big museum locally, Monmouth Museum, okay? So I was like a terrier. I rang up, didn't get any answer. I, went, I kept at it, and I eventually got someone and said, and, and did my sales pitch and went down to meet the curator, very busy Annie, she's lovely, Annie raised me, but, but she's run off us, you know, I know what it's like, because I've been in, in that position myself, she's run off her feet, mm -hmm. she actually, she's like a vicar with several parishes, she runs three museums, Abergavenny, mm -hmm. Chepstow, and Monmouth, and you know, she can't mm -hmm. keep up, so anyway, I met her, did the sales pitch, said, yeah, that's great, and I wanted a pop-up show, to go in the next May, which was the Area of Outstanding National Beauty, Y Valley River Festival, and the theme that, that year, was trees, was woodland. So that we wanted to get in there, a little pop-up show. Mm -hmm. And Fiona, uh, did you mention the film she did? Fiona McIntyre public, um, um, no, she, didn't. She, <laughs> she, she had a film made, um, which we show at all our shows now. It, it, and it, it's us talking, it's George talking. So it, it's the mix of ecology and art, really. Is it the video uh, that's on your website? It probably is, it's on yeah. YouTube, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's made by a fantastic eco, uh, filmmaker, really clever. We had a drone as well going over, over the top, uh, and the Forest Commission uh, gave money. And um, and then we we've just brought out a book last year talking about the story because George wanted to. So we had another, we had two exhibitions. We had one which went all all over last year. Uh, went over a year. It was the longest show I've ever been in because mm. of COVID. And and George said I'd like to write about the works that were made uh from a scientific point of view which is slightly new ground you know it's really interesting so george did all, all the writing we got a three grand grant from area of standing national beauty mm -hmm. uh, uh george and i underwrote it we're selling now it's called art meets ecology mm -hmm. the, you know the art village and lady park woods really mm -hmm. interesting because it's looking at a different slant you're looking through an art, a scientist's eyes at the mm -hmm. works of art and he grouped them into various mm -hmm. various uh subjects like fallen trees regenerate mm -hmm. you know all these mm -hmm. things um, and then uh, that, that was our first site-specific project. Our second one, which is slightly still ongoing, um, was Trees on Wood on, on, on um, Dartmoor and Exmoor. 
And we, we've done that in partnership with both uh, Exmoor and Dartmoor Natural Park Authorities. They come up with, the, I asked them to give me six different sites of ecological, scientific, historic, so, so, mm. uh, you know, so, social interest uh, and history. And we've gone and done work over two years. We focused on, on Exmoor one year, then Dartmoor the, the second year. I had two focus weekends where uh, we, we, sh we, we tur some artists turned up. They could go when they want, but you know, they could, if they mm. come that weekend, we could have, we could have the social things very important to talk about art and, and, mm -hmm. and life and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have pub suppers. That was the most difficult thing to organize and the menus. Mm -hmm. um, and the mm -hmm. idea was you, you, you'd, you'd meet up for the pub suppers, but you'd, you'd perhaps bump into the Arbury you know, colleagues on site the next day which happened it really did it was wonderful so we did Exmoor one year Dartmoor the next year uh, I wanted uh, a, I wanted the big city in between the two moors for show and that is Taunton and the big museum there is Somerset the Somerset Museum mm. thanks to a colleague because everyone brings something to the party Paul Newman who who works in he lives in Sherborne had connect, he works for Somerset Artworks and uh, very well connected, and he knew the guy who ran the place. So we got a conversation going. We went down, Tim and I. We did the sales pitch again, and we got it. You know, we because mm. when you when you work with partners like um, uh, national park authorities, you mm. say, look, I've got. There are partners. I'm bringing their audience. I'm bringing their marketing. You know, it's a good mm. lever. It's a good attraction for a museum. Mm. And it was a stunning show. It was the only real show we had last year. I was in, I think, seven online shows. I can't get excited about them. But it was a beautiful show because they have a designer on team, and um, it, it, that, that was our second site specific project. Mm. We're now looking for a, that was in Somerset, so we're now looking for a Dartmoor, a Dartmoor Devon based one. Mm. And we've got I've got a meeting in June in Plymouth and a gallery in Plymouth where they, they want to show it. And I was packing for Gibraltar. We'd just been in Gibraltar, which is another exciting story. Uh, in fact, we're running over time, aren't we? Um, and I was packing. I'm just going to rang. ask you one question after okay, before sorry. you finish up. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just finish this. And it was it was Robert Eagle saying, "Oh, let's have a show. I want to have a show in in Burr House in Hampstead." So, oh, yeah, okay. And then a few weeks ago, I was in I was emailed by Exmoor National Park Authority saying mm. we're planting a new woodland this autumn, 2021. We've got to raise 50k. Big Martin campaign. Uh, we'd love to have an Arbury show on the moor in the autumn. I said, yeah, fine. We've got it nailed. We're showing in, in November. So yeah, I saw that at the beginning, I was looking for venues, but now they're coming to us. Wonderful. <laughs> All I'm hearing is like a fantastic like success story, uh, you know, bringing yeah, it like yeah. starting it uh, kind of from your own experience and your own like interest and passion for, for representing and, and, you know, painting trees and then suddenly like gathering all these people around it, uh, having something that's that inspires that that works. And then sort of yeah. carrying that forward into um, throughout the years. I I'm really curious to, to know, like, to understand, like, you know, you said one of your main goals is promoting your subject, right? Trees. And yeah. it's clearly been, you know, doing so well and you're, you're in demand. And, you know, this is something that's, that's really exploding from, from what I see and from what I hear from you. Do you know why? Do you have an idea of why? Like, yeah, you know? yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Would you like to share <laughs> I, that? It, it, it's what it's why you're here. It's why you found me. It's it, it because because the subject is so is so fundamentally important. I mean, what I loved about 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 the whole thing is that and I, and I'm steeped in art history, having worked at the gallery, you know, British art history. Mm. It is one of the major subjects of British art history. A fantastic legacy right through mm. Um, mm. Uh, Thomas Gainsborough, the Romantic artists, the Pre-Raphaelite painters. Some like inch bold. Mm. Then you get the, the, the post impressionists, all these Camden Town artists were painting trees, uh, Gilman, Gore, Bevan, and people like that, and, and Ginner. And then you have artists like Victor Passmore and especially Piet Mondrian, who used the tree stylistically for artistic mm -hmm. development. So Mondrian, who we know as this urban abstract grid, mm -hmm. primary colors shapes, yeah, mm -hmm. that came from, as a post impressionist. He was doing trees, it came from the tree. And Desmond Morris, the famous the last living English surrealist painter told me, he said, um, yeah, he went inside the tree because if you look at um, under microscope at a bit of cell uh, cellulose from a tree, that's yeah, what you get. You get this, yeah. So it's got this amazing artistic oh, quality. But all our, all our trees are very, all our exhibitions are very accessible because people love trees. Mm. They love trees. And, and the artists, you know, you get these you can do single portraits. We're doing the we're doing a project on ancient trees. That's the history of the tree and the and the subject as well. You can do them as groups. You know, you can do them in distance. I mean, they're they're such a versatile subject. But I'm doing these history subjects as well, like the pillbox show and the castle show, because they, you know, trees are there as well. You know, it's mm. part of the subject. In fact, my two castle subjects I had uh, was a double subject. I had tree and castle. <laughs> 
So there's many reasons why. And of course, it has now become this amazing symbol of our fragile environment, you know, with species extinction and global warming, all, all this, and, and tree diseases. One of our artists, Julian Perry, uh, who's left us now, he's got a solo show next year at Southampton, really good artist. He paints tree diseases. Mm. So, um, you know, and he talks about art as painting as being a political act. So, you know, we will follow any vein. We, mm -hmm. It's such a versatile subject. We will, we will, we, we, um, we, accept, we, we gather them all. We do it all. Mm. It is a very versatile subject, isn't it? From, from all the different species, from all the different elements yeah. and parts of the tree. And I'm just yeah. using I mean, a tree right here. So I'm looking at it in front of me and it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no botanist. You know, you've ha heard my story. I, I like them because they're vertical. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, exactly. That, you you know, just like it because I'm, you I'm, like the verticality. <laughs> well, and the other thing is that David Hockney, David Hockney uh, mm. had just had this major show at the Royal Academy. It was called The Bigger Picture, I think. A lot of trees in there. He made it, he put trees on the map before we came, if you like. Mm. And I wanted to get him into my uh, Under the Greenwood show, mm. but he never lends. I couldn't get one, so oh, I'll have to do without him then. Never mind. But he had this lovely quote, which was when he was asked why I like painted trees, he said, Oh, it's that um, spatial thrill, and he's got it there. Just that two words. You, you understand what I'm talking about? This, this complexity Absolutely. of, of meshing of branches. You're looking through stuff. You know, the spatial thrill. That's. that's have have you been to see the latest exhibition? His latest exhibition at the Royal Academy. I haven't. I'm afraid. Well, that's yes. <laughs> okay. I, I think I'll, yeah. I'll try to go at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So another tree painter, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a very another artist, uh, but yeah very much in, in, in the forefront as well, yeah. like in the, you know, yeah. it's a very so advertised it's, exhibition. So clearly it's something that's yeah. resonating more widely. So, so this this subject that I stumbled across, you know, it wasn't planned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just I like verticals, um, you know, it ticks so many boxes. It, it just, uh, and people love trees and they're, you know, yeah. we even go into abstraction with them. And so it's, um, yeah. so it's fantastic. It's so wonderful. it's, it's, and it's sort of caught this, um, the imagination of people, I think. And you're right, which is why you're here, um, this, yeah. this, this yearning for nature back to and the COVID thing has, you know, sparked that off again. Um, mm. It was always there for many of us, but um, I think it's, you know, it, it, it has inspired people to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to contemplate, you know, the, the nature of their lives and, and their activities and, and mm. how, um, you know, and well-being, all of this and mental health, you know, it, it's, it's all there, isn't it? Mm. It's all there. Yeah, absolutely. And especially in the last, like you said, like uh, yeah, year and a yeah. half, like there's been, I, I really like this word yearning because that's exactly what it is. Like, it's yeah. like so I, I, you know, everything is unstable around us and what like, yeah. what attracts us is like what's here and it's always there and it's not moving. It's, well, it's not moving. It's, it's absolutely it's rooted, absolutely, it's stable. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. this, this, this calling and this, yeah, and this connection. Yeah. And well, I was, I was, in, I was in one exhibition down in uh, Devon, oh, Somerset, um, and uh, with some other artists and uh, on trees and uh, part of the Somerset Artworks Festival thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember the title of it. And one of the artists um, who had taught at the local art college, um, he, he, we gave talks, I gave a talk, he gave a talk. And he was talking about, you know, he actually talks to trees. I mean, he really believes. That he's talking to them and they're mm. talking back to him, which mm. was wow, that's uh, that's different. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, the, I've just attended a lot of the events from the Urban Tree <laughs> Festival as well, um, and they have a great collection online of their recordings. Yeah. And there's a lot of, yeah, interesting like um, uh, experimentations with with trees and connections yeah. to trees in, in in there. Yeah. So I recommend yeah to to have a look <laughs> there as well. I just have. I like, it, it's, sorry. Yeah. No, fin finish finish up, saying, and I have one last question. It was just, just that I'd like to just um, cement this um, affinity with humanity, you know, the, the, the yes. synergies between mm -hmm. people and, I mean, one of our heroes is, is Paul Nash, who died tragically young in 1946, um, he had bronchial asthma, and he, during his lifetime he was either broke, depressed or, um, uh, or ill, so it's amazing he produced the body of work he did, you know, one of the Britain's major tree painters, and he famously said, I love and worship trees and believe they are people. Mm. So that's one of our mottos. And you definitely <laughs> and you definitely feel that when you're you know immersed in nature. And I just spent the yeah. weekend in the countryside as well, uh, escaped from London, and just you know like looking up and just being alone in a forest. It's just well, it's the Japanese call it forest bathing, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. That's also a very you know new, not not new, yeah. but like a very popular trend as yeah. well right now. And yeah. you know whatever yeah. you call it, it's it's this connection oh. to nature. Yeah, and, and you know it's in politics now because in the in the last campaigns for the last general election, both major parties were saying we're going to plant twenty hundred million trees, mm -hmm. and the other one said more. You know, so yeah. it's it's on their agenda, uh, yeah. and it's actually happening. Yeah. 
That's wonderful. Uh, although, you know, this destruction of the, the ancient woodland for HS2 is, is mm. contrary, alarmingly. Yeah. And, 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 and do, do ask people to look at the hashtag uh, irreplaceable project. Okay. If you scroll down, it's not at the top. If you put in, if you Google irreplaceable, it won't be at the top. If you scroll down, you'll find it. Mm. And it's this campaign by this uh, Dartmoor based artist. She's a teacher, mm. uh, Claire Tyler, who started it uh, online. Uh, I've been helping with it as Philip Raz as well. And um, she, she's, uh, she's got the Slade School of Art students involved. She knows a tutor there involved in making artwork around That's highlighting great. this yeah. loss. I'll, I'll definitely like, um, in any case, right. You, you've given us so many references, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'll make sure to, oh, you know, to reference them and, and like myself, look at the ones I don't know. Uh, so that's a wealth of, of a resource, which is absolutely- uh, tip, 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 tip of the iceberg. Now, uh, one thing that we're planning, <laughs> we're, we're planning we, we, we have so, much, so many connections now, we're planning a major um, seminar conference day. Okay. Part of um, um, Somerset Artworks Festival year next year, Mm -hmm. We'll have a venue for show, but we we will bring in artists, art historians. Mm. Um, Christiana um, from Oxford Brooks has has, has, has written in our our, our publications. Um, Christiana Payne, uh, George Peterkin will come. Mm -hmm. We'll have ecologists, and it'd be great if you could come as well, actually, and and, and talk about what you're doing, Camille. Mm -hmm. That'd be fantastic. So uh, you know, I'm I'm quite good at networking, so I grab people. And say, uh, <laughs> so I think that that will be to have a holistic view. I think Exeter University did something similar a couple of years ago. It was sold out. So you know, so nothing new under trees. We'll just sort of tweak it a bit, whatever, and mm. do our own thing. But I think that's quite exciting yeah. that we've got enough to talk about. There's um, so much momentum, and like I'm. Well, it's, I'm, it's I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, Very scientists. Exciting. Scientists know now. It's been around for a long time, but you can you can pump people full of statistics about you know climate change, everything. But what you, you need to get them through through the through the heart, mm. through the arts. They, so they are they working with artists, yeah. If you if you see the trees as something that you know is an emotional attachment and something that you well, of course love they and, are and care yeah. and you know appreciate, yeah. like why would you want to yeah. cut them down? Well, I mean, look at that campaign for those trees they were cutting down in Sheffield. That went that was sort of that went. Mm. Uh, yeah. viral didn't it that was huge so people are attached to trees and and when there was talk about uh, privatizing the forest commission that you know that that wasn't going anywhere because a huge outcry so mm. people really care so i think we're onto something yeah i think so and i'm very excited to follow the the future of uh, of what you're doing and the arborealists and and yeah, the further yeah. projects that you have i mean it's uh yeah it's it's a great way i think to to communicate that share that and and create yeah just keep creating that momentum and uh, around the trees yeah pe people ask me oh what are you painting now so tree <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i also like people ask me like so you only do trees I'm like, yeah that's that's my only subject <laughs> yeah but it's, it's it's such a versatile thing you can yeah you can... And, yeah, and it's very rich and so yeah i mean my last my last question is really about um i mean i, I usually ask about um you know references and someone who inspires you but you've already shared so much so um my last question is um you know a bit more personal is there a specific tree in your life that's particularly meaningful uh, for you or evokes a memory or no uh, no not one the, there are there are quite a few trees that i i know and every time i see it i think oh there you are mm. you know um so actually i painted a tree uh which my daughter has um and i was on a, on a footpath and I, I went so i'd known that image uh because i take a couple of months to make a painting so mm. it had been in my head for a lot of time and when i walked that path cut some years later and i came to the tree mm. the hairs on the back of my neck started to sort of go up when i came to the mm -hmm. image I, oh it's it's there but it was a different season so I thought that's interesting. I've been asking an interesting mm. film. So, yeah. Um, because of course so, you're surrounded with nature. You have you have trees uh, all around where you live, and so. Yeah, millions of trees. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but not one. I love oak. I love the old oaks. I mean, they're so. The old oaks. Know, yeah. Oh well, uh, the ancient tree thing. There's a fantastic uh, ch old chestnut that's called the Tortworth chestnut, just off the A5 in Gloucestershire, M5 in Gloucestershire, mm -hmm. by in a churchyard just off outside the churchyard. And it was described as ancient in King Stephen's time, and it's mm -hmm. uh, which is you oh know eleven uh, thirties. So, and it, I think it was planted in in you know something like the seventh seventh century, and it's still there. It's just a I painted. It. It's fantastic. Wonderful. They're just amazing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they're so beautiful. The so 
and that, that, that's where you can get the, the energy from as well I hear like they're they're very uh, yeah they're full of these the strong energies to sort of recharge and I mean when you think of like everything they've lived through and everything they've seen and like sure, their yeah. past well, their history they're like a living history if you want <laughs> the, 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 the book that Christiana Payne wrote was called Silent Witnesses so mm. it's British art history and she mentions us so we've got a footnote in art history already so there you go and another great reference yeah yeah, Wonderful. yeah. yeah Christiana well, Payne yeah Tim, thank you so much. Uh, 